All right, welcome back. Today we are going to begin the final uh, review of Chapter 7. Before the stay-at-home order, we uh, just about were ready to have a test on Chapter 7, and that got interrupted. So I'm going to take you back through a couple days of just review, and uh, we're going to do that, uh, and then you'll be tested in about a week or so. All right, this is called Solving a System of Linear Equations. And today I'm going to talk about two things. Briefly, I'm going to give you an overview again. And then we're going to talk about how you use substitution to solve a system of linear equations. Let's start with the overview. Well, solving a system means we're going to try to find where two lines cross. And that's the definition of solving a system. Uh, where do the lines cross? Where do they intersect? We're looking for this point where they intersect, or maybe two lines intersect over here. Okay, where are those two spots? That spot, and that spot is going to be represented by an ordered pair, some x y pair. So when we say where did the two lines cross, we're saying where do what is the the ordered pair where they cross. Solving a system is asking where do the lines cross. Now there are three things that can happen when we look at this. Let's take a look at all three of them. Alright, when we consider the fact that lines may cross or they may not, there are three things that could happen. Number one, and I just showed you a picture of this one, this is your x-y axis here, is where the two lines intersect, there are two lines, and they intersect in one point and that point will be an ordered pair like I don't know like 3 5 or something like that the it's asking the question where do they intersect so the first situation is where they intersect in one point but you know two lines could be parallel like this two lines are parallel and they intersect in no points or we might say no solution no solution because they intersect in in no points. They're parallel. They never are going to cross at all. And the third situation is where the two uh, equations don't look like it initially, but if we work with them a little bit, we realize that those two different lines are in fact the same line. And so sometimes, here I've drawn a picture of two different lines, but they really are the same line, just one on top of the other. And this means that they intersect in all points. Uh, or we could say, all. And in many cases, this is where we get that solution, all real numbers, all points. So there's three things that could happen. They could intersect in one point, no points, or all points. By the way, notice that these two at the bottom here, no points and all points, the slopes are the same on them. They're both the same slope. This one, they're not only the same slope, they're the same y-intercept. but but if they intersect in no points, they have the same slope and different y-intercepts. It's only this one up here where the slopes have to be different in order for them to intersect in one point. So these are the three things that can happen. And these are talked about uh, in your book. And most of the time, these things are discussed in the book. I'm just going over it again. And those three things that could happen are found for you on the bottom of page 369. Page 369. Those three situations are found down there. All right. Let's take a look at the methods for finding those points. All right. Now, if we're going to find where the two lines cross, there are some methods that we can use, and there's also three different methods that we could use. One method is by graphing both lines. And we graph both lines, and then we figure out, okay, let's see here. I'm just looking by visually, visually I'm just looking at it, and I'm seeing where do they cross. And I would make a guess. I'll make a guess and see if I can figure out where they cross. And then I will check my guess to see if it really does work. So, graphing is method number one. Method number two, and that's the one we're going to look at today, is, is done by something called substitution. And we'll get into that in a second. 
And then number three is a method called elimination. And we'll get into that in the next video. These three methods. We're not going to spend any more time on graphing. Um, that's usually fairly intuitive. Uh, and as you go to a test, you can kind of figure that stuff out pretty easily just by the visually looking at it. But you do have to guess, make a guess and check. So today we are going to take a look at solving by substitution. Let's dig into it. All right, here are two lines. And if you recall, a line is in the form often mx plus b, where the b is the y-intercept, or the initial amount, and m is the slope. Now, these can be rewritten in different order so that they are in that order. For the first one is already in that order, I guess, if we just put a plus zero here. But, the, but uh, I'm going to erase that here in a second. But both of these are lines. Okay. Now, solving by substitution says we're looking for an ordered pair, some ordered pair, where both equations have the same ordered pair. Uh, this line, for example, might have the ordered pair 3, 5. And this other line also has that ordered pair 3, 5. We're looking for that place where both lines have the same ordered pair. So in other words, the x's are the same in both, and the y's are the same in the both at that point. So we're going to use substitution method to find that. And here's what we're going to do. First of all, when we solve equation in substitution method, it's a good idea uh, not to have the equation stacked up like they're showing you here. In fact, in your book, they almost always give you these two equations stacked up like that. So when you copy them into your work area, write them next to each other. And the reason we need to do that is because we're going to have to work each of these equations a little bit separately at a time. So I've written them both separately. All right, here we go. Now, you know, if, if the x and y values are the same in both equations at that point, then our first goal is to get one of those variables alone in one of these equations. Well, it turns out that this variable y is already alone. So that step is already done for us here. And once we have one variable alone in one of the equations, then we're ready to make our substitution. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take what y is equal to, see y is equal to 3x, and we're going to stick it in the other equation for y. We're going to take that y out and we're going to put 3x in its place. And by doing that we're doing what's called substituting. And I'm going to just copy this down. There's the x again. There's the plus sign again. There's the 2 again. Don't forget to bring everything else down. And y is now 3x. Bring down everything else. So only thing that I've done here is I've pulled the y out and I put 3x in its place because we know y is equal to 3x. And at that, at that place, at that point of, of intersection where the two lines meet, well, the y's are the same. So if the y's are the same, let's just take out y here and put 3x in its place. Now, the good news is, by substituting, we only have one variable in this equation, and it can be solved. So let's do the algebra here. This is 6x. Makes this 7x equals negative 21. And dividing by 7, we discover that x is equal to a negative 3. So we're halfway there. We have discovered that in our ordered pair, the x value is negative 3. This is x, and this will be y. The x value is negative 3. Okay? And then we'll take and we'll dance back to the left side, take this answer, take it back here, and plug it into the first equation. So we got y equals 3 times the negative 3, which is x, and y turns out to be negative 9. So there's the other half of our ordered pair, negative 9. And then finally, we would check this ordered pair in the other equation. So let's go over here and check these, these x, y pair back in here. So x is negative 3, y is a negative 9, 2 times a negative 9, and we get negative 3 
minus 18 is a negative 21. Yeah, that works, okay? So substitution is sort of what I call the substitution dance where we go left foot, right foot, left foot again, and right foot again. We're kind of going back and forth, back and forth to solve these. We make a substitution, and then we go ahead and make another substitution. Actually, there's two substitutions in the problem. So let's try another one, and then I'll give you some special cases here. All right, let's take the second equation. And as I mentioned before, the book is going to show them to you stacked up like this, but we want to write them separately. So I'm going to take and rewrite this over here. And you can see from the last problem we did that we did need to have them separate so that they weren't in each other's way. Okay? So there you go. I've copied them over. Make sure you copy everything over correctly. Double check it before you start the problem. Now, step one again is to get one of the variables alone. So I'm looking at these two equations thinking to myself, well, I don't see a variable that's on one side of the equal sign alone. But I have a variable that's almost alone. It's x. And with just one little step, I can actually get x alone in this left equation here. So I'm going to do that. I want to get the variable alone, and I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. And now the variable x is alone in this equation. Uh, in the last problem, y, well, we got y alone, but it doesn't matter. Either variable, whichever one is the easiest to get alone. So um, now x is alone. We've just danced on the left foot here. We're going to now go over here and dance on the right foot. And I'm going to set, since x is equal to this, I'm going to take this thing, which is equal to x, we're going to go over here and stick it in place of x. Throw x away and stick this in place of x. Copy everything else down. All right? 3 times x, which is negative 5 minus 3, minus 2y equals 8. Notice I brought everything down. 8 came down, the equal sign, negative 2y came down, subtract, and the multiplying by 3 came down too. So now that we've substituted in place of x, all we got left in this equation is y. And we can solve for y if we just go ahead and do the algebra. Here we go. 3 times a negative 5y is negative 15y. Distributing here, minus 9. Okay, let's combine like terms. We got negative 17y. And adding 9 to both sides, we got negative 17y equals 17. And dividing by a negative 17, we find that y is equal to a negative 1. So what we find is that our ordered pair is something negative 1. y is a negative 1. By the way, you'll notice I start the ordered pair as soon as I have my first number here. Now I'm looking to find x. So we're going to take this and take it back in here and substitute it in the bottom equation. There's room down here, so we're going to do that. So substitute in, we get negative 5 times negative 1. y was negative 1. And x is uh, negative, negative is 5 minus 3, or x is 2. So if x is 2, I'm going to put my 2 in my order pair. There is the point at which the two lines intersect. Now to double check that, I would take this ordered pair and I just, by the way, I just danced on the left foot again. Now I'm going to go back and dance on the right foot, okay? And I'm going to substitute it back in here. And I, I don't have any room to write here, but let's substitute 2 in for three, uh, x. 3 times 2 is 6. And negative 2 times negative 1 is another 2, is positive 2. And that's equal to 8. So that works. That checks. That checks. That works. So you can see that the dance here uh, went four steps. Left, right, left, right. By the way, the dance could also start on the right foot. You can start right, left, right, left. But the goal is to get one of the variables alone first. Let's take a look at another one. All right. Let's take a look at this one. Um, you'll notice I've already written these two equations uh, next to each other. I didn't want them stacked up, so I didn't want to use up that room on the top here. So 
Now, the first step is to see if you can find an equation that has a variable alone. Well, look over here. Y is already alone. So in this problem, we're going to start on the right foot, and we see that Y is already alone. Now, we're going to take this, what Y is equal to. I'm going to dance back over here to the left and stick that in for Y. We're going to throw Y away and put Y, put the, this thing circled thing, in for in for y. And so we'll bring everything down the page, bring down the negative 2 as well, and y is actually equal to 3x plus 2. See, remember that the y's and the x's are the same in both equations because that's where they intersect, right? So there you go. Now we've substituted 3x plus 2 in for y. Alright, now the equation has only one variable, x, and we can solve for that. So here we go. And collecting like terms, oh, well, look here, 6x minus 6x is 0x. 0x is 0, that goes out, and we end up with this. Now, clear back at the beginning of the school year in, in Chapter 3, we had this situation happen where the variables drop out of the problem. See, they dropped out. They're gone. They're gone completely. And when that happens, we ask that question, we have to ask, is this true. Is this true? Is this sentence here at the bottom, negative 4 equals negative 4, is it true? With only two possible outcomes, okay? If the answer to that is yes, it's true, then we're going to say true for all numbers. In this case, it's all points. In other words, what we're finding out is that these two equations are the same equation. They don't look like it initially, but they end up being the same equation and they overlap completely. One line is laying right on top of the other, just like this. Okay. The other situation is what happens if we get to the bottom here and the answer is no, they're not true. Let's say one of these numbers is not negative 4, let's say it's something else. Is that true? No, that's not true. And if the answer is no, then our answer is going to be no solution. Well, obviously, in this situation, those two were, in fact, equal. So this is true. So you're going to say true for all points. If it's no solution, that would be a situation where the two lines happen to be parallel. Let's do one of those. All right, here are two equations. Now, remember, we're first thing we're looking for is to find an equation where variables is alone or almost alone. Well, the easiest variable to get alone here would be y in the second equation. I just subtract 4x from both sides and I'll have y alone. So I'm going to start by dancing on the right foot here. So let's subtract 4x from both sides. And I got y equals negative 4x plus 11. Alright, now I have a variable that's alone. And if y is equal to this thing in the circle here, then I'm going to take that over here and stick it in for y. Throw this y away and stick this in its place. Substitution. So here we go. 8x plus 2 times, don't forget the 2, negative 4x plus 11 is equal to y equals 13. Okay, so we're substituting in here. All right, let's distribute 8x minus 8x plus 22 equals 13. And just like in the last problem, 8x minus 8x is going to go out. That's gone. And I end up with 22 equals 13. When all the variables go out, let me say that again, when all the variables go out, you ask the question, is this true? Well, is 22 equal to 13? Well, no, it's not. It's not true. So if, it's, if the answer is no, you're going to write no solution. And what you've got here is two lines that are parallel, that do not intersect each other. There's no place at which they intersect. These are parallel lines. So when, when the answer is no, you're going to say no solution. All right?
All right. Well, that brings us to the end of this discussion on substitution. It's not doesn't take very long to go through this, and hopefully you remember this now that I've jogged your memory from back in in March, in February and March. And your assignment tonight is to do a little review assignment from the back of your book. This is a review. Please make sure you go through this again so you remember how to, to do these. So this is assignment number 66. It's in the back of the book, page 835. Lesson 7-2, I would like you to do problems 1 through 15 all. Don't be afraid to come back and watch the videos again. They are very helpful, and you can answer most of your questions by doing that. All right, see you next time.